Hey patrons! This is a special video just for you guys. We're here camped for the past week at, near the Grand Tetons, which are just right in the background in our wonderful RV. Ra has done us well all this time. We're all the way on video number 23. That is really hard to believe. I didn't think, I didn't know that we would make videos for this long. But one of the reasons that we continue to make videos is because of you guys. Thank you so much for like all your contributions, your emails and words of support. Really appreciate it. And wanted to make this little video for you to kind of let you guys get to know us better and I'll also ask for suggestions on what you want to see in the future coming up. Hey guys, thanks for all your words of support and uh, everybody said nice things when you guys noticed that I was so upset and tired of the RV trip and I wanted to go back to the boat. I kind of recovered myself in the, the Ho rainforest area in the Olympic Peninsula. We had a lot of isolation and it was really good for my soul being out in the forest and away from people and it renewed my desire to continue our trip and finish it and keep making videos about it and talking about it and seeing our country so I'm re-energized for that but another thing that did happen was that the desire to be back on the boat hasn't gone away and Danny and I have really been talking about it a lot thinking about it a lot planning it we're trying to schedule guests to come to the boat. Um, we've had visitors that, that came to the RV. We want to bring them to the boat. And so hopefully that will happen in the future. It's still a long time, time-wise, till we go back to the boat. But it seems like it's right around the corner for us. Once you uh, start traveling and living a lifestyle like ours, something like a six-month time span actually seems really short. I know that sounds crazy, but things happen so fast that uh, you don't really have a lot of time to, to make the ch it's it's beast or famine it's spurts of crazy activity followed by lots of relaxing so hopefully that goes smoothly when we we get ready to sell the RV and everything but we still have about two months of RV trip left and we're gonna make the most of it so thanks for your support so we had a lot of fun sailing in Washington but then we had to get on our way and head up to the Olympic Peninsula because I really wanted to see the Olympic um, National Park and that's what was there. It's, it's pretty removed from the rest of the state of Washington. 101 going up going up to Port Angeles and also Highway 112 going to Cape Flattery were both very hilly, curvy, slow roads. Like the RV, I'm not sure the RV would have made it very well at all going to uh, Cape Flattery. but. The roads there are very small. <laughs> it's really wild. Yeah, they twist and turn. They have like turnouts everywhere for slow vehicles and stuff. Yeah. They had lots of adventure bikers. I was actually really surprised. People on their bikes with all their stuff. And, and let me tell you, if you're, <laughs> if you're one of these people, don't be an idiot. Don't ride out in the middle of the lane. And so we took Ra and the motorcycle up Highway 101. And we headed to a town called Port Angeles, which is a really neat little area on the southern shores of the Straits of Juan de Fuca. And it's right next to Hurricane Ridge. And is it Hurricane Ridge? Yeah, Hurricane Ridge is right there. But we didn't go to Hurricane Ridge. Instead, we uh, took the motorcycle and went to Cape Flattery mm. because we wanted to see the, the most northwest point in the, uh, the lower 48. So that was fun. We went to Cape Flattery on the 4th of July. It was yeah. pretty neat. And then we got there, and I'm still not sure if the Cape itself is in federal lands or like Indian lands. The yeah, I, it looks like it's controlled by the Indians that live right there. The uh, the Quinault? No, I don't know. I don't remember. We forget the tribe. Yeah, there's actually like probably eight or something on the Olympic Peninsula with reservations. And it was really busy, I guess because it was the 4th of July. We were thinking that maybe it would be like deserted, but there were a lot of people there. And it is way out of the way. I mean, it's not like you can just get there. From anywhere you go, you have to drive almost two hours to get to it. And the only thing out of there is the Cape. That's it. So you really have to be committed. So. <laughs> but it was busy. Yeah. It was like a nice little walk through the forest, and then it opened up, and uh, it was really pretty. The, the waves like crashing on the rocks was almost hypnotic. You could just sit there and stare at it. Yeah. And there were birds everywhere. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, there were lots of seabirds and everything. The, the forest that you walked through was really neat. I mean, that is right there on the edge, and there were some gigantic trees. I don't know what it is about me and trees, but I am, like, really excited about the trees. From here, we're staying in the Tetons, and we're trying to stay up north as long as we can because we're scared of the hot weather and the desert down south. But we'll be heading down to Zion and Bryce Canyon next, and... Uh, so we're on our way. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.